Well, to me, the Settlers is a game where a lot of little people are running around, uh, work for me and create a beautiful kingdom uh, and at the end I'm the boss of everything. The most special thing is that um, whenever you start an action in the game, there's a whole cascade of events that it starts. And um, you can watch all those effects and it can happen that you initiate something and 20 minutes later something else happens still. All this cuteness, little animated uh, figures running around your village, uh, but also one very important point for me is uh, the time sink. You can spend so much hours playing the game and uh, optimizing your, your ecosystem and so on. So everything's connected and you can um, for a long time optimize and tune your economy. Settlers is such a big IP now, such a big brand, the one of the biggest ones in Germany from German team and I'm now very proud of being part of it. In the 20 years since its inception, the Settlers has come to stand for in-depth economic management, real-time strategy, and last but by no means least, what has come to be known as the distinctive bustle factor. The little hard-working Settlers were a great success from the time they first appeared on the market on June 30th, 1993 for the Amiga, a PC version followed one year later, succeeded by seven equally popular sequels over the years. This whole journey started with a small team of creative individuals. We decided to take a deeper look at the settlers from their humble beginnings. We talked to people who were there when it all started. We talked to them about the original idea about their first contact with the Settlers series and what it felt like to work on the first installments of the Settlers. I was also inspired by other games like Populous or Little Computer People or SimCity, but um, the whole concept of Settlers of course is really unique. And um, originally I came to Thomas Herzler, the CEO of Blue Byte, um, those days, and I came with two concepts. For one I even had a prototype, but um, when I started talking about the Settlers and my imagination of what the game should look like, he was absolutely convinced and told me, let's do this one. So I started. So originally um, I started creating the game alone. So I did all like design and um, of course all the coding. And um, in the second year there was an additional artist, um, Christoph Werner, who created all the nice arts. And um, then in the final months a lot of my friends helped. So my living room was basically changed into a um, QA department. <laughs> and um, yeah, we tested the game for um, some months there. So I've been working uh, at Bluebyte uh, in the end of 1980s, long time ago, and I've been doing various games, but one task for me was to, uh, to, Q, to do QA for Settlers 1, so that was the basic uh, version I played. My, my first contact uh, with Settlers was many, many years ago when I played uh, Settlers 1 as a fan, not as a, uh, a worker in the games industry. Um, I played it many times with my friends because I had that split screen option where I can play together, and uh, I played it for so many hours I cannot remember. Yeah, it's completely different to nowadays. So those days very few, ideally one very passionate person could really create a whole game. And um, Settlers 1 is an, is an example for that. So for example the code um, is 70,000 lines of assembler. It's in one file and there are basically no comments. So I only had to agree with myself. And while playing Settlers 1, um, some, some, some ideas grown up in my mind, uh, for which uh, I wrote down later on, and that was the basic start for Settlers 2. My first Settlers was the Settlers 2, and I, I got it as a gift from somebody working at Bluebird at these times. It was in the year of 1997, so long time ago, and I started playing that game and I quickly got addicted. It was a very, very good game and I really loved it, and uh, so that I could join Bluebird a long time later, 10 years later, it was really a very nice surprise that I would later join this big company creating this great game. Uh, the Settlers 2 team, that was uh, something uh, that I uh, experienced when I was at Bluebyte, uh, were mainly four people, so a very small team. Uh, the development was around half a year as far as I can remember, and it's not comparable to the development nowadays. My, f my first contact with, uh, with Bluebyte 
was when, well, when actually when Ubisoft bought it. So it was, I was working at Ubisoft at the time in Dusseldorf and uh, there was a rumor, right? I, we feel that there's, we, we might have bought a company and you can imagine especially all the marketing and salespeople uh, were very, very excited about that because uh, this is a very big game and a very, uh, very, very well-known company that we bought. And then just a few weeks later, I was offered to work at Blue Byte. So then I, I really went there and I was the producer of the Settlers. Uh, so that was in 2001. If you compare the game development process today with how games were made back in the day, you will see some major differences, not least in terms of graphics. The team grew exponentially, the graphics improved. But what was more important? Graphics or perfect gameplay? Watch our video to find out how the team balanced the growing demands placed on them. Those days, um, a good game design was really more important than good graphics. And I think it's the same now. So there were only a few years in between where maybe good graphics could hide a bad design. But nowadays, especially with free to play, it's even more important to convince players that you have a good game. And you can only deliver this game experience with a great game design. I think for any game that you want to play for, uh, let's say, more than just a few minutes, uh, the, the game mechanics, the game design is the most important ingredient. Um, the, the graphics can, 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 can grab your attention, let's say, for the first minutes or maybe even a bit longer if it's really spectacular. But to continue playing, uh, and that was the same back then compared to today, from my point of view, um, uh, the game mechanics have to take over. And especially uh, with a game like Settlers. Uh, yes, you can probably play for hours and just enjoy all the animations. And that's really, really cool. Um, but if, if you don't uh, uh, like the game design, if you don't like the gameplay, you, you will stop playing. And today, it's, to me, it's the exact same thing. Well, the gameplay is very special for Settlers. Um, and it's something that uh, brings you very deep in, in the game and that lets you play for hours and hours again. Uh, however, uh, the graphics itself are very cute uh, since the beginning. Uh, if you imagine Settlers 1, that was in the 90s, 20 years ago. Um, even in these times, the graphics were really great. It was very detailed, you could see everything. Even if it was quite pixelic from the graphic style, it was brilliant, even in these times. The team was very small, uh, you know, uh, it was a game could be done in, in months, not in years, with, with quite a few people. So uh, the, the programming, the graphics was of course important and uh, it had to, 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 to be uh, at a certain quality, but the, the game idea was the most imp important thing to start with. So Settlers 1 and Settlers 2 really, and especially Settlers 1 of course, introduced this genre. It was, it was a, a, a huge leap to, to see this kind of uh, strategy game. Um, with uh, s with all these uh, um, cycles, econ economic cycles, and so on. So that was that was really really good. And the second one just improved that in many ways. Um, and I, I played the first one after I played the second one, and I really said like, no, no, I don't want to play the first one. The second one just improved it a lot, I think. Um, and then the third one really introduced more real time strategy elements, like uh, directly controlled fighters um, and. That really changed the dynamics of the game quite a bit. And number four then, again, uh, was, a, was an improval of that. After Settlers 2, Settlers, the gameplay moved a little bit to more real-time gameplay, and, but we, we, we really liked the old style Settlers games. So the idea was just to bring the old gameplay to, uh, to, to a new level, to, including new graphics, new, 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 new possibilities we didn't have before. Yeah, just to, to go on with the old ideas. When I made a sequel to a game, I always try to really offer new experiences to the player. So we really um, completely changed the road system. Also, multiplayer was added to the game and um, the combat system was completely reworked. As far as I know, there is still a Settlers 3 server active nowadays, which is like 15 years now. What we uh, decided for Settlers 5 was to go more in the real-time direction. So with a bit, little bit less focus on the construction part and some more options in the fighting part. Um, and then for Settlers 6, uh, we focused very much on city building, really building a medieval city. Uh, and one of the signs of that was that we introduced um, a storage uh, in the middle of the city where, with a marketplace up front where every, everybody has to go to get his stuff. Uh, and we also introduced needs for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the citizens. Um, both, both of those games were uh, pretty successful, um, 
but from a from a content point of view from a brand point of view we were not so happy with the way it, it was going so uh, in Settler 7 we went away we went back and forth at the same time so uh, we introduced some new things we intru introduced the victory point system uh, and we also went back to uh, especially in terms of production chains we went a bit back to even Settlers 2 um, and to me Settler 7 really is, is the best of the series I I played it a lot. I mean, I was I was responsible for the production, uh, so I had to play it while it was uh, being developed. But after we released the version, released the game after launch date, uh, at home in my spare time, <laughs> I just played it like crazy. It was so much fun. I think the campaign was great, and uh, the multiplayer sessions with the victory points, I, I think they were really, really good. So um, I'm, I'm a big fan still today. Talking about the Settler series means not only talking about box titles, of course. The latest major success in the series is the Settlers Online, which is a free-to-play browser game, playable in more than 40 countries worldwide. Find out what our The Settlers veterans have to say about this. So after Settlers 3, I basically switched to multiplayer games and I didn't track um, the sequels a lot. But now uh, Settlers Online is, I think, it's a very interesting project and I really appreciate that. And I think there's a lot of new opportunities in this market um, for the series. So what, what we as a company have seen in, uh, uh, around that time is that free-to-play games um, pretty much were there to stay. I mean, you see those, those browser-based online games and in the beginning we thought, well, that's an interactive website, who's going to play that? And then suddenly we see like, wow, this is really successful and they really start to look like games. Um, and lots of those games out there really looked a bit like Settlers. They weren't called Settlers, obviously, but they looked a bit like it. So we said, well, we can, we can maybe do this better. So we, we started this project and at the time we had looked at different ways to uh, bring Settlers to different platforms. Um, so this was just an another try and it, it, it worked very well. When we started Settlers Online, it was still a test balloon. We wanted to try if it really works. Nobody knew if this is the way to go. And then when we launched it, it was uh, already appreciated uh, by the audience. We had 15, 20,000 people on the very first day playing that game without even announcing it. And since then it became very, very big. We have now millions and millions of people in our game playing Settlers Online every day. I think it was a great success. So, uh, and it was very successful. They, they managed uh, to, to bring that feeling of a game and that spirit of the Settlers series to a browser game. And it's so difficult because you have not now not a game that you can play for some hours and then you start the next mission. You play it for months. And that is really a big challenge and uh, I think it was a very good step uh, and I'm really looking forward what will be the next step. For us it was very important that it's really not a pay to win game but a, but a free to play game so uh, yes uh, we like it when people pay to save some time but you don't have to do it and um, it, it, it proved to work very well with the Settlers game system with the Settlers game mechanics and people really appreciated it. It feels great because I think uh, that the, the, the free-to-play approach is, is, is the way to go nowadays. Uh, it also, uh, due to the limits of the, 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 the browser version right now, it looks quite similar to, to the very old uh, Settlers part. It's not in 3D yet, uh, this all will come maybe in future, but right now it, it's, it's, very, it's a natural evolvement of what Settlers should be for me. I think the launch time was a moment where it, it, it really fit very well. So we had an enormous uh, success from day one, pretty much. So yeah, that, that, that's how it went online and I think it works quite well. One single guy had a bright idea more than 20 years ago and got the ball rolling on one of Germany's most distinctive and successful gaming series. Join us as we look at the constant creative evolution of the settlers that turned it into an industry standard in the field of strategy gaming for two whole decades. Celebrate with us as Blue Byte sets the franchise up for a successful future with the Settlers Online for another 20 years.